There is no doubt about it that AI has come to the scene and exploded in every possible manner. I think most product companies that are producing software and technology, if you do not have a component of AI into your software, you're, gone. <laughs> you're cooked. Yeah, you're like, there's no, there's no tomorrow for you. Mario Martinez Jr., CEO and founder of Vengreso, creators of Fly Message. And so what we're doing and what we're bringing to the market is, is what if I build a tool that is a super productivity tool? And in that super productivity tool, I no longer have to have all these different tools, five different tools to be able to do one thing, which is gonna cost me 120 to $150 a month in terms of monthly recurring fees. No, I just pay one fee of 15 to 20 bucks a month. I'm a believer that when it comes to human to human engagement, it must be human assisted, where the business owner is in full control control over whether or not they write or publish something. One, two, three, four. Welcome to the High Performance CEO Show, your exclusive insight into the strategies and success habits of the world's top CEOs. I'm your host, Sebastian Schieke, entrepreneur, mentor, and business angel. Prepare to grow your business, enhance your leadership skills, and thrive in today's world. Let's dive in. And today, again, I'm talking with Mario, the co-founder of uh, Van Cresso, Mario Martinez Jr. And I'm so glad to have you on the show again, buddy. Uh, we had a conversation about a year ago. And, and this time, during this time, so much happened. We are just flying through the world of AI with new developments almost every day. And uh, you are the uh, co-founder of uh, Van Cresso, which is an amazing um productivity software company and uh, you have implemented some very cool AI features uh, recently. So I just thought, hey, let's talk about what humanized AI means for you and um, how you basically improving the world of productivity. So welcome back to the show, buddy. Sebastian, thank you so much, man, for having me uh, here as part of the show. Excited to be here with all of you guys again uh, and spend some time talking about human-assisted AI and tools and technologies to make us work better, faster, smarter, all that good stuff. So excited to be here with you. So last time we talked about productivity, we talked about um, using uh, tools to sort of um, take snippets of text and insert it wherever you um communicate and email and LinkedIn and HubSpot in all kinds of uh, applications. But since then a lot happened, you know. So that first of all, how do you how do you perceive the changes which are amplified by AI in the last um, couple of months? Well, there is no doubt about it that uh, AI has um, come onto the scene and exploded in every possible manner. In fact, I think most product companies that are producing software and technology, if you do not have a component of AI into your software, you're, gone. <laughs> you, you're, you're cooked. Yeah. yeah, you're like, there's no, there's no tomorrow for you. Yeah. You've got to deliver something that is going to bring value added enhancement to the user's workflow, process, systems, engagement, information gathering, uh, sharing, uh, um, uh, make them think smarter, faster, quicker, something that is unique into that particular user's workflow. And that's super important in terms of being able to uh, engage. And that's hard. It's really hard because you have to be really getting into the mind of a user. Yes. How would a user utilize this and placing AI right into the center of their workflow so that they can work smarter, quicker, faster, better, or be enabled with better information and insights to help them do whatever it is that they need to do. Uh, so uh, I, first off, I think that's the biggest change that has happened over the course of the last year. Um, and I would argue that for uh, Vingresso's Fly message, flymsg.io, I would argue that we were probably a little late to the game uh, in terms of being able to implement uh, AI technologies into the user's workflow. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you have to be thinking about is, are you creating a Me Too movement? Now, not to be confused with the term, the political term of Me Too movement, and not to degrade that particular movement and what the value is for those that really are focused in on that, but um, you, you've got to be thinking about 
Um, am I bringing something new or different into the marketplace? Um, or maybe it's not new or different, but am I bringing it into a collective workflow process that makes it easier for a user to be able to, as I said earlier, um, work quicker, smarter, faster, better, or to have better insights and data in order for them to do their job mm -hmm. better. Uh, so I, I think those are some of the real big important things. And uh, for those people who are, are thinking about how do I use AI, um, I think one of the things that users are saying now is, I don't want a tool for this, tool for that, tool for this, tool for that, tool for this, tool for that. The big thing now is, is I've got every Tom, Dick and Harry uh, that is telling me, look, AI, 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 AI. And now I have to have different tools for different use cases for uh, similar use cases that all do different types of things and nothing, one thing that's consolidated. And that's where we are, we, Fly Message, is bringing something very different to the table in terms of how we go about servicing our customer and the way we're thinking about AI. Case in point, are there other tools that bring AI technologies into um, a user's workflow, like writing content, writing posts, um, even writing uh, responses on LinkedIn? Yes, there are. However, they are a one trick pony. What do I mean by that? It's all they do is just that one thing. So a user's got to pay 40 yeah. bucks for this, then another 40 bucks for that, and another 40 bucks for this, and another 40 bucks for that. And so the way we're thinking about it is, is uh, very similar to the CEO, Mr. Zhang, the CEO and founder of Apollo.io. He actually sat in the role as a sales leader. And one of the things that he was frustrated about was he had to buy five different tools just uh -huh. to accomplish one thing yep. in the workflow. And he said, what if I were to build an application that would be the super sales engagement tool? And that's exactly what he did. And so what we're doing and what we're bringing to the market is, is what if I build a tool that is a super productivity tool? And in that super productivity tool, I no longer have to have all these different tools, five different tools to be able to do one thing, which is gonna cost me 120 to $150 a month in terms of monthly recurring fees. No, I just pay one fee of 15 to 20 bucks a month. And that is what users are now asking for, is uh, the ability to be able to bring it into their workflow, to consolidate applications so that they don't have so many different applications that are running that are really dragging down their browser, dragging down their system, uh, and having multiple processing power. So I think what we're getting into now is AI came and it's not gone. Everybody's got to have it. And now what we're getting into is, is um, it's only relevant and valuable to me if it enters into my workflow that I do every single day. Well, and that's, I think, where we're starting to see now an evolution and a change is building it into the workflow. Yeah, what I find fascinating is, I mean, uh, in, say, half a year ago, you know, um, people, they started associating AI with ChatGPT. And um, their main business case was, okay, they, they write some blog posts and uh, maybe some letters, you know, some very simple activities. But now we really see the, the benefits and the business cases uh, coming up. Uh, so it's not only a simple, a simple uh, copy anymore. Yeah? It's so much integrated in everything we do. Yeah, I mean, nowadays, I mean, uh, working with ChatGPT, you can upload documents. Yeah, and uh, I just figured out today. You say, okay, please change something, and you actually can download the edited document i mean this is crazy huh? and this is <laughs> so the complete integration as you said in your workflow uh, it's not just a, a single tools it's um it really implements integrates in everything you do and uh, for you as a um, productivity tool it really integrates in your daily communication say on linkedin on uh, different um, messaging platforms uh, different uh, crms and this is the power. So when you look at your um, use case or usage of the product, where do you see the most times people, the most, the most efficient saving they can um, experience uh, using uh, something like FlyMessage? Yeah, so let's start with, first off, what is FlyMessage? And then make sure that everybody <laughs> understands like the different use cases. So FlyMessage <laughs> was originally designed as a sales tool <laughs> and uh, for business owners and salespeople. 
And what we did was, is we had a uh, learning component yeah. called Fly Learning. And inside of there, you could take 14 hours worth of sales prospecting training, everything from LinkedIn to video to sales messaging. And we taught sellers and business owners how to go about uh, engaging with their target prospect and how to write messaging that actually converts to be able to get the attention of their buyers. So we still have that. That's our fly learning. That's, so that's the education component. Then we layered on Fly Message, which was a text expander tool. So we taught you how to write all this messaging. We even gave you 60 different sales scripts that you could utilize in various different use cases from everything from a cold email outreach to a happy work anniversary and converting that into a meeting on LinkedIn. So what happened was is business owners and sellers were utilizing these scripts and they had a Word document. In addition to our work, Word document, they had a Google Doc. OneNote, Evernote, uh -huh. Notepad, Notebook, a draft email, or they were hunting and pecking in their send folder. So these templates that they were utilizing were everywhere, and it could take up to 15 minutes per uh, message per engagement, depending on whether or not you had to go hunt and peck, or depending on whether or not you knew where it was at. Copy and paste. So a few minutes to 15 mm. minutes. But if you think about that and you multiply that by, you know, 25 messages a day that you're doing outbound engagement to prospect, that could really add up pretty significantly. So we created Fly Message to take all of your messages, templates, snippets, even something as stupid simple as my Zoom room link, mm -hmm. dash ZM, where you can type a code in on Google Chat, email, LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, HubSpot, Salesforce, type in dash ZM, and it would build out that particular message on anywhere online. So that was teach you how to write messaging, give you a tool to deploy messaging, Fly Message. In addition, in our, as I mentioned in our fly learning, we also provided um, the ability to teach you how to engage with buyers through platforms like LinkedIn and video. So we then created a uh, tool which was called which is called Fly Engage and Fly Posts. It is part of the Fly Message family, and that really allows users to go ahead and to go to anyone's LinkedIn post. As an example, it AI reads the post and writes a response for you. Now, in some cases, we get it 95% of the way uh, uh, correct, and all you have to do is at mention the individual's name. In other cases, we get a 50% right, which means 50% wrong. What, what do I mean by that? This is what's called human-assisted AI. So this is not AI that performs a function and it's automated, where it just it reads, writes, posts. No, we've implemented human-assisted AI so that we never take away the element of the brain that's what we need the brain in the process right meaning you are going to think yeah. before you hit post or send whether or not it's contextually relevant the material that has been written and this is the importance of ai being involved in the process i'm a believer that some things can be ai automated and completely done by ai but when it comes to human to human engagement human to human interaction yeah. it must be human assisted where the seller or the human or the business owner is in full control over whether or not they write or publish something yeah. and so that's where we launched some of these fly message ai tools was there so if we're going to teach you how to engage we're going to give you a tool to engage if we're going to teach you how to write message we're going to give you a tool to be able to deploy that messaging and so that is essentially what fly message has done and what it what we've created in order to be able to help support the workflow of a salesperson business owner entrepreneur uh a customer success individual mm -hmm. who's who's um engaging with their their target buyer and the customer service line of business which happens to be the biggest consumers and where we're seeing the biggest usage right now the biggest growth is no doubt our ai tools that is absolutely the fastest growing segment of our business in terms of how we measure number of characters being typed for you. And so that's how we measure our success is how many characters per month are we typing for our user community? Um, and that is either we are building that message out through a fly cut, we call it, or a shortcut, AKA a, a snippet, at, or we are writing content for you through the um, the platform like LinkedIn uh, posts, 
for starting a post and for comments as well. So right now we were sitting at about uh, 36 million characters per month. We're sitting at about 45 million characters per month in about 40 days. Now writing content for individuals. And uh, that is probably the single largest component of growth right there. And it's going to continue growing. And what will continue to release is tools centered around the workflow of helping individuals write. Because what we what we found out is uh, myself, I, I am a, I, I've done whatever it is, almost a thousand blogs, created uh, hundreds of videos. I speak all over the globe uh, and the world and to companies uh, as large as Cisco with 20,000 sales reps, right? So speaking and writing comes naturally to me. By the way, writing is my worst enemy. I hate, 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 hate writing, which is why I have never written a book. <laughs> so um, I am of the common people, I call it. I am the common people. But those of us that are in sales, we were never trained as writers. Uh, those of us that are business owners, we were never trained as writers. Yeah. Um, so things like, where should we put the commas at? Uh, and it does it go before the and or not before the and, right? There's actually real grammatical components of where, how you would put that comma in, but we need tools to yeah. help us, tools to help us write. And that's what we are seeing is the growth on the writing side is not just, I, not just I have my template. I actually want you to help me write my template or write my message. And then I want to use AI to be able to grammatically make sure that it's correct before I hit send and go. And really all that I'm assessing is, is there contextual relevance to this message? Does it have the right call to action? Well, and did I hyper personalize? And those are things that sellers, customer service agents, and business owners, they can do because we use the great human mind. I really love this um, concept and you really make clear that it's not an AI generated text. So imagine the kind of world we create, you know, I mean, there are systems creating posts, yeah, some AI bots creating posts, and then you have another AI bots answering these posts, you know. <laughs> so it's an AI to AI communication, yeah, which uh, completely doesn't make sense. Yeah? So. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. That, it's funny that you mentioned that because we, we've seen that before. Uh, and in fact, uh, we use a, a, a bot on our on our website um, for answering people's questions. And the other day there was uh, somebody who was very angry over the fact that they couldn't speak to a human. Of course, they were doing it in the middle of the night. And of course, you're not going to speak to a human in the middle of the night, at least for a company that is based out of California. Um, but that having been said, they were like, I'm talking to a bot. Uh, this is like an, a bot talking to a bot. <laughs> and I just got, a, got kind of got him a snicker out of that person's communication with our bot. <laughs> no, I think this is really important. I mean, uh, having tools assist you, uh, it's, it's very helpful and amazing concept, but assist you, not just replace you. Yeah, And this is what uh, we have to make clear also when... when um, promoting these uh, applications that uh, no it's not an automation where you can switch off your brain and post something and then have this I, I, imagine what what you could uh, end up with you know you have an acceleration of um, stupidity you know you have one bot saying something stupid and another one replying and then it basically escalates so <laughs> funny that you mentioned that um uh y y could, could you could you say something that is totally contextually out of place yes absolutely um actually interesting i, I did a, a test recently on uh fly messages uh, ai products <laughs> using uh fly engage now, Fly Engage is a tool we can read anybody's individual posts. If you, it's, if anybody installed it, flymsg.io, the moment that you install Fly Fly Message, we automatically embed it into uh -huh. LinkedIn. And uh, as soon as you click on comment on any post, you'll see Fly Engage pop up where you, it has predefined prompts. And so um, I, I was writing, I wanted to write a response back to somebody that I totally disagreed with. And so I changed the prompt to say, um, uh, please make sure you write um, to identify total disagreement with the above mentioned words um, and make sure that you highlight why I'm in disagreement and it's because, and I put a sentence inside there. And uh, it was funny because I didn't think about this and, and the product team obviously did. And it came back with a response saying, I'm sorry, I am not trained to be able to create disagreement in the public forums. <laughs> uh, and so that having been said, I can provide you pros and yeah. cons, but I do not want to cause disagreement that um, that's not my, my use case or my purpose in life is to create uh, a disagreement with individuals. 
And I it's thought, actually good. Well, dang it! I wanted to be able to uh, to be able to say I disagreed, but I'm so glad yeah. that it didn't write anything exactly. stupid, right, for me. So uh, I ended up changing the prompt to say, "Talk about the pros and the cons of this, and why the cons outweigh the pros." And it did exactly what I wanted it to do. Gave me all the details of um, why I disagreed, and then it gave the reasons why it agreed. But then I went in and added context to this, which is. But I believe all of the, the cons weigh, outweigh the mm. pros, and here's why. And it was very interesting. Like no, no, Most people don't talk about the cons outweigh the pros, but, but it was a very interesting post in terms of how I was uh, structuring it. But you're right. We don't want AI out there creating a bunch of crazy engagement that is going to get yeah, us in trouble. If you disagree, use your brain. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. And be respectful. Please, be yes, respectful. Yes. I mean, there's so much hate and... and uh, disrespectful communication on uh, social media and uh, we don't want to basically um, support this by even more um, automation and, and uh, human assisted AI. Yeah, so you should uh, praise your developers and tell them that they did a good job. <laughs> I will. I actually sh I shared with them the response back uh, from AI yeah. that uh, to told me that the they were going to get me in trouble. <laughs> so how do you see this? I mean, it's it's very um, philosophical to talk about uh, the future and how this develops, but where do you see this going? I mean, from a product, but also, yeah, from an uh, AI perspective. I mean, maybe put some context to this. I mean, we're recording this... Uh, two weeks after this um, trauma at OpenAI where Sam Altman was uh, sacked and then reinstigated and uh, now there are rumors coming up that um, they fired him because um, AI was, they basically developed uh, something very powerful, yeah, more like in kind of an, an sort of intelligence uh, um, AI system, yeah, which um, gets it's nearly capable of uh, matching humans, and uh, some of the um, more concerned board members wanted to stop this. So, I mean, there's so much happening, yeah, and and where do you see us in a year's time? Well, to comment on the open AI drama, it's amazing what one man's reputation can do to change a situation. And I think also too, in this era, what people are looking for is they're looking for people who are going to push the boundaries mm -hmm. or the limits of what is possible to be able to um, help. And, but there comes a lot of dangers, of course, uh, that can be implemented with this type of technology and use cases for bad or for good. And so I think that it's very interesting how that, how that played itself out. But in answer to your question, one of the things that we thought about very early on is the use of, of AI and its impact to the enterprise. So if you looked at all the different tools that are out there, uh, those different tools that um, do some of the things that we do, so text expansion, uh, nobody does the education and learning, brings that in and, and mirrors that to uh, to technology, helping to eliminate fools with tools. Uh, that's that's mm -hmm. our goal is eliminate fools with tools. But but just the, some of the text expansion and then some of the AI writing, a lot of these tools actually integrated directly with chat GPT and the public LLMs, yep. Google Bard's uh, technology and implementing with uh, implemented with that. <laughs> and so the downside that they created is, is that a lot of the content by which you're serving up materials, documents, uh, assets, uh, private uh, board notes, board meetings, all the uh, all these things that are being uh, served into AI, into AI is actually being used to train the public LLM. And as such, that data is now embedded into the AI platform. And then they turn around and it can be used on any other mm -hmm. message, write up, post content, etc. It's sort and of, uh, we knew sorry, sorry, it sort of ahead. creates a strong bias no? I mean, uh, it it replicates what um, they f they basically feed in, and uh, yeah, absolutely. And there's mm -hmm. danger in that, right? So, um, in fact, a, uh, w w one of our our corporate customers that had over 2,500 sellers, they had all 2,500 sellers sign an a an affidavit of employment that they would not use AI in any way, shape, or form uh, to input any data, any data 
into uh, a, uh, a chat GPT or public LM. Otherwise, it's grounds mm-hmm. for termination. And so the companies really wanted to protect their their assets. And so what we decided in building out AI um, to become a real product, a real product, meaning uh, not just a feature that is gaining the masses um, with a bunch of individual prosumers, but actually being able to sell into the enterprise is we implemented enterprise grade AI, which we were the first and only one to do that actually so far amongst all of our competitors. And the enterprise grade AI is focused in on the LLMs that are private LLMs. So you cannot, it's not being used to train. No data is stored or used to train the asset. And so that means you have to do a lot of tuning. You're constantly tuning that model to make sure that it's tweaking to give it the right perspective, the right messaging. And that was very important. And so I think a lot of companies that are developing AI, um, there's a lot of cool things that are being developed by the chat GPTs and the Google um, and the Google AI platforms. But you've got to make sure that if you you understand your buyer, if your buyer is the prosumer PLG um, product, a product led growth um, segment, great then you can utilize the, the public assets and nobody really is going to you know, be concerned about that until their data is being con- is being put out somewhere else that it shouldn't be. Or if it's a product-led growth and a sales-led growth motion or just a sales-led growth motion, you should be thinking about how to leverage enterprise AI so that you're not training the public LLMs with data and inputs that shouldn't be available to the public market. So that's probably the first thing is, is the is making sure that you've got the insights, the insights to uh, design a product that keeps individuals' data in safe. So one of the next uh, features that we'll be rolling out is the ability to read your messages and to write responses, emails, uh, LinkedIn messages, uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator messages, as an example. And that is could be private, well, right? In some cases, uh, you may use it to respond back to a most customer. Most of the time, private. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That so, is so so and then in some cases it might be public yeah. where you're answering a question and you're pulling a blog or you're pulling a white paper or you're pulling an ebook, mm-hmm. right? So so it's it, it could be, yeah. you know, fifty fifty, whatever the case might be. So the enterprise grade AI is very, very important in terms of um, uh, that step. And that's what we've done with Fly Message in terms of helping users. And by the way, Fly Message is available for free. People, individuals can try it now. You only get a certain allotment. Uh, and so once you hit that, that yeah. threshold, you're going to want to you know, upgrade. I think the next thing that we are thinking about in terms of AI um, and what the market is thinking and what we are also thinking as well is uh, making sure that it's integrated into every step of a user's workflow. So as an example, if I am on email and I'm writing a message, I want to be able to use AI to be able to write that message. If I am on LinkedIn, use it there. If I am on Zendesk, use it there. If I am on, you fill in the blank. Now, interestingly, we've got a lot of um, interesting questions from investors um, about, well, what makes your application unique and specific? Because Zendesk has AI built into answering questions and Salesforce has it built in and HubSpot has it now built in. Um, What makes it unique and different? Well, what makes it unique and different is I'm giving you a ubiquitous experience across multiple platforms. Salesforce won't do that because Salesforce only wants you in one place, Salesforce. HubSpot won't do that because HubSpot only wants you in one place, HubSpot. They want you to be everywhere in HubSpot. And um, even LinkedIn's new AI writing feature is bogus. They want you to write the content and then they'll help you rewrite the content of which is even at just as is worse than what it is that you wrote to begin with. Um, so really, if you think about it, what we're focused on is, is what if I had the ability to be able to use AI to help me write across the seven to 12 SaaS applications that I cross per day, per day. Think about the life of a CSR. Whoa. In the morning, I start off on, dra- on Drift, chat, uh, j- uh, chatbot, first hour. Second hour, I move to Twitter to c- communicate with customers. Third hour, I move to Zendesk to process tickets. Fourth hour, I'm getting emails from the direct email support line. And the fifth hour, I'm moving to social media on LinkedIn. Yeah. 
What tool is available for them to be able to help write and communicate? None. None. And, and that's where platforms like Fly Message come into play, where we can have ubiquitous a ubiquitous experience across where you work, mm -hmm. not just in our application, yeah. where you and work. By, all, by using one tool, you also generate one voice. You know, you don't uh, have different tonality and different uh, ways of expression. Uh, you, If you use one tool, you have one way of communication, which... Uh, yeah, spans over all the different platforms, which is exactly helpful. so. I, I'm a big believer that um, we we AI is is helping making us better, quicker, faster, and in some cases smarter. That's for sure. For example, uh, my writing, I use uh, a grammar tool, and that tool actually makes my writing shorter and less complex and smarter. I feel smarter yeah. actually. Well, I mean, <laughs> it really does. I mean, just face it. As a salesman, that's just not your primary focus. Writing, you know, you. We say as people, we don't have patience, we want results, so we um, don't have don't want to spend too much time on a single topic. Yeah, so this is why we need these tools. Yeah, I can completely Exactly, relate. exactly yeah. right. But now I need to think about my process and my yeah. workflow. And that's I I believe the the winner of the game will be those that are involved in the day-to-day process and workflow of a user and understanding that user's uh, journey and engaging where they are engaged at and it's showing up wherever you may go wherever you're at you seeing fly message on any website that can help you write a, a, a even a you know a snippet into a google form of some mm -hmm. sort right um and i think that that's where we we will see this at and then in terms of next gen um what i also think that you'll see happening is um uh, making it uh speak in your voice is yeah. really the next generation of of tools and technologies right now when you put something into chat gpt it just writes it as a general professional mm -hmm. manner right you can start doing tweaks with the prompt engineering to make it you know have a friendly voice to make it have a this make it have a that but i want it to be in mario style i want to feed it my blogs or white papers or i want it to be in the company mm -hmm. style what if i was able to take my ving uh, uh, uh or flymessage.com and feed all the blogs inside exactly. there so that every time it writes a response back, it's actually yeah. saying, is there anything inside of the database that I could utilize to, on this particular topic and pull that in? As long as you didn't use ChatGPT to write all your blogs, so then it's a generic language. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, and even that in content mm -hmm. writing, you know, that that's a great, although we don't do content writing, uh, we absolutely use uh, AI tools to help us with that yeah. content writing, but it only gets you about 60 to 70% of the way there. You still got to do that other 30 to 40% and bring in stories and uh, contextual relevance and making sure that it matches your perspective and your thought yeah. leadership. So it still takes time. It just is a heck of a lot faster to edit something than it is to sit there and write something. I agree. So will there be a personal fly engage tool which learns from you, which uh, adapts and um, takes your personal voice into account when it generates messages? That's a really good question. And I can't say that there will be, but I can say that that's actually something that we're doing mm -hmm. research on right now is, is how to make it more personable mm -hmm. uh, to you as an individual mm -hmm. that it learns your yep. voice. Um, and that's a little bit complex, well, I can get, uh, especially when you think about it in the context of what if a corporation buys a license um, and how do they want it to speak? Do they want it to speak in my aggressive, direct, forward uh, tone or do they want yeah. it to speak in a you know more soft a more simple more professional manner like it's it's really a tough one to to balance so mm -hmm. uh, i can't say that we've cracked the code i i don't know the answer to that question but i can say that we're thinking about it looking back at your journey as a as an entrepreneur i mean been in business for quite a while how would you rate the current time we are in yeah, in terms of speed of change um, agility also uncertainty i mean um, when i look back almost 30 years i'm in business i mean the times you live in the moment are just crazy you know that's only one word i can <laughs> i can use the speed of change and uh, as we discussed in the beginning every week something new comes out what, what's your view my view is, I think in my 26 years of being in sales, marketing, and executive leadership, this is no doubt by far the hardest time that I've ever had inside a business. 
And I <laughs> talk about that because I think it's important and relevant because a lot of business owners, uh, entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, um, they're struggling. And they're struggling to be able to find either product market fit or uh, growth or you know people to have money uh we have we we, we work with some of the, the the largest companies and money is tight uh -huh. money is very very tight even on an individual level right like we're, we're we're fundraising and on an individual level um it's very difficult for um some individuals mm -hmm. to be able to even you know part ways as a um as a c-suite with five ten grand you know, to, yeah. to be able to invest into a, a startup. So I think the one of the hardest, I think we have to acknowledge that it's, it's tough out there for a lot of business owners and, um, the market mm -hmm. and the conditions are not making it easier to accelerate growth. And we do need something at a more global level to be able to accelerate growth. And uh, that's way above my pay grade <laughs> in terms of being oh. able to make that happen. So I think the first thing is, is acknowledgement. It's, it's tough out there for individuals. And then the second thing is, is you got to get back down to um, what you know worked and stick to those two or three things at most. And I think the problem that we have is, is right now entrepreneurs are trying everything possible under the sun everything possible to throw just anything at the wall to sticks, see what yeah. sticks and to some degree that's there that, that's understandable because right. you're trying to see is there a channel that's going to take off and accelerate yep. and grow and to be honest i mean that might happen but it's probably for the small percentage of companies that one specific channel just like accelerates and grows like crazy rather I think what we need to go back to is really remaining focused on what channel worked yeah. in the past and how do I leverage that channel to accelerate and grow, even if it means going back to our customers to asking for a referral. Um, and so that is probably the, the, the big element there is stick to a focused environment. And that's so hard. If you are a real entrepreneur and a business owner, um, we've got ADD up the wazoo. Uh, <laughs> and we want to, we, we read something and we're like, Ooh, that's a great Jump idea. I yes. should try that. <laughs> the shiny object syndrome. No. It, exactly. Uh. It's very, very hard. But I think that's what we need to start focusing in on is being laser focused on the mission at hand and making sure that we grow and uh, develop the platform, the system, the tool, et cetera, um, in that particular regard and, you know, take it off to yeah, go from there. I like this staying focused, laser focused and uh, optimize uh, the way you work. Yeah, Use productivity tools to be more efficient, to be faster, to have less distraction and take the path uh, which, as you said, worked in the past and uh, don't get distracted from all these shiny objects which uh, scream for your attention. Hey, Mario, um, it was amazing uh, having you again on the show. Before we wrap up, is there a special offer for our listeners uh, and uh, audience for um, Fly Message? I mean, we haven't talked about this. I just... Uh, It just crossed my mind. Maybe there's something you want to throw in for people who are interested to, uh, who want to um, have a look. I appreciate that. Yes. Well, first off, you can go to flymsg.io and uh, I encourage each one of you guys to set up your individual account. Uh, and once you set up that account, you'll be able to um, uh, actually leverage Fly Message for free, both ex uh, expanding text as well as helping you engage with your target buyer um, on LinkedIn using some of the AI tools. Um, and in answer to your question, is there something special that we can give? Yes, uh, you can absolutely leverage um, the uh, a discount program. And I'm going to give you a secret code uh, between now and the end of the year. Just use when you, if you wanted to leverage it on any of our plans, which are basically from 27 bucks to 132 bucks a year. So a very, very low cost to be able to really increase your productivity and save about an hour per day. Here's a secret code. You ready for it, Sebastian? I'm ready, but we also put it in the show notes. So if uh, people are driving in a moment, don't just stop and put out your pen. Um, it will be uh, below the recording. I'm going to give the the secret plot the secret code, and that is a 15 percent off uh, our 27, 66, and 132 dollar yearly plans. It's Prime Day 20. 
2023 with a capital P and a capital D. Prime Day 2023, capital P, capital D, 2023. Uh, all one word, all together. Put that in the coupon code and it'll give you an extra 15% off. Amazing. Thank you so much. And um, you will find this um, code in the link down below. And hey, um, we will definitely speak again in this fast moving time. There will be lots uh, to talk uh, in a couple of months. Until then, Mario, have an amazing time. Wish you all luck you have and to meet with your business. And um, hey, let's keep rocking, brother. Thank you so much for having me, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning into the High Performance CEO Show. I'm your host, Sebastian Schieke, and it's been a pleasure serving you. Please subscribe to our show on your favorite platform and leave us a review. Your support helps us reach more listeners and create a bigger impact. Check out our website, sebastianschieke.com, for additional resources. Until next time, be bold, be exceptional, be outstanding, be a leader.